episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Gym Aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where Gym Aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash C-V-A-S-P-S, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 36th episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into the minds of some of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the University of Cincinnati's Men's Basketball's Director of Sport Performance, Michael Rayfeld. Mike, thanks for being with us, brother. Hey, my pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man. It's just great to talk. Great to see you. Great to hear you're doing well. And before we get too far into this, though, buddy, who is Mike Rayfeld? Who is Mike Rayfeld? Well, I mean, like you said, I'm the Director of Sports Performance for Men's Basketball. Um, been, been there for eight full seasons. So this will be my upcoming ninth season. So as, as we all know, pretty fortunate to have some roots here in Cincinnati. Um, before becoming a men's basketball strength coach, I was mostly in the NFL, uh, worked for one year, um, under Chip Morton with the universe, uh, Cincinnati Bengals NFL team for one full year. That was right after the lockout, um, which was interesting guys coming off the lockout and on train detrained um before that i was with a league called the ufl it's kind of like the xfl back in the day it was a startup league um they had about three full seasons i was there for two seasons and then before that i was three seasons with, with the jacksonville jaguars down in jacksonville florida nfl team there awesome man i love it and cincinnati's a great town to be in man yeah not too bad cost of living's good um you know, we uh been fortunate enough to have uh, some success in men's basketball, so it makes my life a little easier. Yeah, and you know what? Quick shout out to the AAC because it's a league with a lot of really good strength coaches in it that people overlook quite a bit. Yeah, um, no, we have a great little network of strength coaches. We all, you know, talk a lot and text, and I'm um, really fortunate that. We don't have any guys with big egos. Um, I mean, I talk to everyone before the game, after the game, exchange emails, exchange ideas. Um, some really good guys in the conference that uh, get to network and talk shop with. So it's, it's nice to be able to reach out and lean on guys um, when you have different, you know, issues. No doubt, man. No doubt. That's always a great thing to have. Well, listen, dude, there's a guy who's been in pro football and, you know, now working at a real high level of basketball, there's been a ton of learning situations throughout your career. So if you wouldn't mind sharing one learning situation that really brought an epiphany in your career. Yeah, um, speaking of, so obviously with the situation we're in now, 
where we're basically becoming, uh, you know, internet social media strength coaches, um, and with little to no equipment, um, how do we train an athlete without a barbell, without a squat rack? Well, back in my UFL days, <clears throat> when I was hired, I had no idea. Like I was hired like basically to be uh, in Casa Grande, Arizona in a week. So I drove out there, had no idea what kind of equipment I was going to have, weight room. Um, ended up getting there, and we had not one single piece of strength condition equipment, one strength coach. And I have guys, you know, coming out of college to some pro football players are pretty experienced with, you know, high demands on what they want to do from a strength conditioning standpoint. So that experience really led me to become more of a DIY, find a way um, strength coach. And in Casa Grande, Arizona, it's about 30 minutes south of Phoenix. Not much there. But what was there was a lot of sand. <laughs> and a Home Depot, and actually they service a lot of uh, tractor trailer tires, so they have inner tubes. So I made basically makeshift weight, weight room for the first four to five weeks, training you know, 90 to 53 football players until we cut a roster down with PVC pipe, sand, um, tubes, making you know DIY uh, Bulgarian bags, um, DIY TRXs, whatever we could do provide some resistance training for these guys um, to get them ready for a pro football season. So it was kind of a wild experience, which was uh, let me kind of open my mind that you just don't need, you don't, you know, need a barbell. And luckily, you know, our muscle doesn't have any cognitive ability. I'll know there's resistance. So we can find a way to train our, train athletes without a barbell, without a squat rack. That's a great little line, man. The muscle doesn't have any cognitive ability. I like that. I think that right now that's really important. Yeah. We, you know, you know, when we recruit, here's one. <laughs> when we recruit athletes, you know, we need fancy like barbells and um, force plates and things. But when we recruit a muscle fiber, uh, just need some some tension, right? Thought that one today. Yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah, I, I like <laughs> it. I like it. Okay. Thanks. It's, anybody wants to use that, yo, Mike and Nickel going forward. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, that, yeah that's been trademarked. But not, nah, man, you know, and in all these stops and these, you know, these different areas along the way, you, you've seen a lot. You've been to a lot. So you've learned a lot and you've had to do a lot on your own. But if Mike could ask one question and you know you would get the answer to it, what would that question be and why? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, the biggest thing I want to know, um, I mean, from my coaching staff to the players I train and, I mean, to my wife, um, is I want them asking them if they think I care. Um, if they think I care, then I can be a better coach, a better husband. They're going to be more bought into what I say as a leader as, of my household or a leader of the strength conditioning center or whatever that might be, um, trying to help a kid with his lifestyle habits, um, nutrition, sleep, and getting the kid to do something that he doesn't want to do, which is, you know, 98% of our job. That's great, because especially then, too, you can, depending on the answer, it would really dictate how you would act, right? Yeah. Like getting... I'd hope they say yes. Yeah, getting a no from that would be rough. Yeah. Because, I mean, you want you want to create the perception, and it should be genuine that you care, and every decision you make for the student athlete is for them or the team, right? So if they're coming back with the answer no, we better rectify that pretty quick. No doubt, man. Yeah. No doubt. But listen, bud, like, you're super in with the guys. You, you guys do a great job with developing players, which means you're around them all the time as most of us in college basketball are. But everybody needs their rewind, their recharge, and their escape. So what's Mike's escape? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we're incredibly busy as college basketball strength coaches. Um, you know, you get, a, you get a week here in the spring and a week in the fall. Obviously, this year is a lot different. Um, you have to be a little more in, uh, intrinsically motivated as a strength coach right now to keep your guys on track. But um, for me, 
if I just sit in the back, um, you know, on the deck, up, my mind is still going. So I like projects. So I'll do a lot of different non-strength conditioning projects. So like a house project or a car project. Um, there's something different that I can focus on and build and it kind of take that mind off of University, University of Cincinnati basketball. And that kind of helps me recharge and rewind a little bit. I dig that, man. And that's one that, that a couple people have talked about. I just wish that I was in some way, shape, or form mechanically inclined to be able to do something <laughs> other than change a tire on my car. Yeah, that's a, that, hey, you got YouTube, man. Like, you got you get on YouTube and learn how to do something, make some mistakes. Next time you do it, uh, figure it out. I mean, but even for me, like, even go out, out mowing the lawn, trimming this basic stuff, it's just... Uh, I mean, it's an hour of doing it and it's work, but it's at least it's a task to get your mind off of, um, you know, current situation that's going on with your program. Yeah. I love how you say that too. It's like, well, you make a mistake. Yeah. But with me, if I were to make a mistake in my car, I know that it would just be <laughs> like, it would either be some sort of disgusting mess of just some object or liquid that is not supposed to touch the ground or something really big and heavy is going to fall on me. That's just my luck. So I don't know if I could do that. Hey, one one time I was I had a Jeep back, back when I was younger, I had a Jeep Wrangler, and I was driving, and the wheel fell off. So that's a story for another time. Wolf. Uh, so careful, yeah, not good. <laughs> no, <laughs> luckily, luckily, it was 85 miles per hour, when that wheel fell off. Ooh. Literally, the whole wheel fell off. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. what. We'll catch up on that one another time. But listen, brother, I appreciate your time. It's always great to see you. It's always great to, to chop it up a bit. And super happy you and the family are doing great, bud. Thanks, man. It's great to talk to you. Great to catch up. Um, hopefully get to do it uh, sometime in person soon. Yeah, man. We're back in the Cayman Islands, hopefully, right? I mean, yeah, right. right. No doubt. <laughs> appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, man.